Hey everyone, geophysicist Stefan Burns here. Breaking news, there is a big asteroid about to perform a very close flyby to the Earth in just a few days on September 18th of this year, 2025. This is asteroid 2025 FA22. And it's about 170 meters in diameter, approximately, and it's approaching as close as 2.2 lunar distances. So you have the Earth, you have the Moon. There is some variability in how close the Moon is to the Earth, but just take one lunar distance, multiply that by 2.2, that's as close as FA22 will get. This is definitely a wake-up call for us. There are a bunch of these asteroids and other objects flying around interplanetary space. There are a bunch of near-Earth asteroids. Of course, we have the main asteroid belt. We have 3I Atlas zooming in to the inner solar system this fall. We also just detected a new comet appear from behind the sun. And so this is Swan 25b. It is quite bright at a magnitude of about six at this moment in time. And so it may start to even be visible to the naked eye in the days ahead and it's lining up in the constellation of Virgo right by Mars and the star Spica. And that is also where 3i Atlas is zooming in at this moment in time. And we don't have precise orbital data yet for this new comet, Swan 25b, but some of the early calculations suggest that it will get very close to the Earth, about 0.25 astronomical units, in October of this year. So it could continue to get brighter, has a very long tail, but in the immediate future, we have this asteroid flyby. There's actually a few asteroids flying by on September 16th and also the 18th, a whole bunch of close flybys of different sizes. To put this asteroid into context, let's talk about the Tunguska event in 1906 because that was a big explosion that occurred over Russia, and well, that asteroid was quite a bit smaller than FA-22. To put this close asteroid flyby of 2025 FA-22 on September 18th into context, let's discuss the Tunguska event and the asteroid that caused that, and also Apophis, which is a very large near-Earth asteroid performing a very, very close flyby of the Earth on April 13th of 2029. We'll start with Tunguska. This exploded about 10 kilometers above Earth's surface. You know, an asteroid's out in space, a meteor is something that is now entering into Earth's atmosphere and is going to impact. And while it did not impact Earth's surface, instead there was an airburst about six miles up, 10 kilometers up, and this flattened the force for a huge extent. In Russia, deep Siberia, you can see all the trees that piled over. They weren't able to do an expedition to the location of that airburst for a couple decades, but when they did, they found scenes of devastation. It was an incredibly powerful meteorite strike. I think the strongest that we've had since 1908. So the, the biggest thing that we've had in the past century plus. And it was only about 40 meters in diameter and its velocity is unknown, but it came in at about 30 degrees at this oblique angle and had this spectacular airburst. So that was a significant event. And the reference point is that if Tunguska happened over a city, it would have leveled that city. Let's say instead of Siberia, it hit Moscow. Well, Moscow would not have been there anymore. And this is 40 meters in diameter. Well, with this asteroid we have coming up, 2025 FA22, it's much larger. Its diameter is estimated to be about 166 meters. We don't know the shape, if it's oblong or not, but it's traveling at a velocity about 10.8 kilometers per second. And so you can imagine that if this actually did hit Earth, instead of just passing by at about 2.2 lunar distances, the sort of havoc and destruction that could cause on our planet. And you don't know where that would land. If it's the ocean, you're creating a big tsunami. If you're hitting the land, you're creating big shock wave and fires and, and probably you're gonna have a whole bunch of seismic activity right in that zone, of course, right? So this is the asteroid we have passing close by. It's not going to hit us according to our orbital calculations, but in my mind, it's certainly a wake up call and presents an opportunity to learn more about these asteroids in our environment nearby in the solar system and also the effects that they can have on the Earth. 
Now the real close flyby that a lot of people are aware of, but certainly a lot more people need to uh, learn about is Apophis. This is 99942 Apophis and its closest approach will be about 31,600 kilometers above Earth's surface. So this is within geosynchronous orbit where we have our satellites at 5.6 Earth radii out and its velocity is 30 kilometers per second. So that's three times faster than 2025 FA22 and that closest approach on the 13th of April 2029 is coming up. So there was a lot of concern about Apophis when it was first discovered. They've done a ton of calculations to refine its orbit to make sure it's not going to hit the Earth. And just my personal opinion is like, I, I hope that their calculations are right. But, you know, to say that there's a 0% probability it's not going to hit, I think is like maybe we should say it's a one in a billion or something like that. Uh, it's passing super close by. And the size of this is 450 by 170 meters. So it has this kind of oblong shape to it. And well, if Tunguska could take out an entire metropolitan area with either an impact or an airburst, if that had happened over one, and if FA-22 was a hit, an even larger zone, right? Because it's so much bigger. The volume on this is significantly larger than the volume of this asteroid for Tunguska because of the uh, diameter to volume ratio, right? As the diameter increases, the volume gets a lot bigger. Well, this big guy right there could really cause some devastation. So we're happy that based off of our precise measurements of 99942 Apophis, it does not appear that's going to impact the Earth, but it does have a whole bunch of close rendezvous with the planet over the next century. So this story may not end in 2029. Gravitational perturbations from that close approach could then cause further refinements and changes to its orbit, which maybe have it actually hit the planet. So this is the big patty in our interplanetary neighborhood right now as it relates to Earth that we are aware of. Interesting that Apophis is the name of the Egyptian god, it's this serpent uh, god of darkness that seeks to devour the earth. And so it's not really the happiest of, of uh, names or labels that they gave this thing. Uh, you wonder kind of why they did it, but we hope it doesn't impact. But this is what we have coming up on September 18th of this year, thankfully quite a bit further out because the orbit of the moon goes from about 357 to 420,000 uh, kilometers. So you see this right here is 31,000. So if we do 2.2 .2 of those, let's make that about 800,000 kilometers out that this will approach Earth. This is more than 10 times closer than that. So, and it's bigger, faster velocity. That is in April of 2029 that we have that very close approach. Of course, I'll be keeping you up to date on that as we get closer to that year and that date. So make sure you subscribe. And here we have our NASA JPL orbit viewer with all the planets, the sun, the earth, the moon, and also asteroid 2025 FA22. I'll put a link to this orbit viewer in the video description if you wanna play with this yourself. But just to orient you, there's a bunch of lines here. These are the different planets and their orbits. This is 2022, uh, 2025 FA22 right there. And here we see the orbit of the Earth. And if we zoom in, we will see the moon there as well. So let me hit play on this. Right now it's set for the 12th of August, but let's go forward one hour at a time here, tracking the Earth. And let's zoom in actually, but we first see this approach right there. But look how close that fly, flies by right there. We're gonna go back in time again and now we'll go forward one at a time. This is how close it gets to the Earth, this very large asteroid. So this is the 17th of September, universal time. And here we have the 18th of September, universal time. Now we have the 19th of September. Here's where it crosses the orbit of the Earth, uh, but its closest approach was a little further back right here. So uh, let me zoom out a little bit more and we'll hit play one more time. And you see this flyby right there. But that is a very close flyby of this asteroid, but thankfully two lunar distances away, which gives us a little bit of peace of mind and comfort, unlike Apophis, which is getting super close. But this is what we have, just kind of, you could think of it almost like energetically 
over the next few days, swinging in close. And another factor that just appeared on our scopes, it was there of course already, but we just became aware of it, is this new comet, Swan 25b, just now having emerged from behind the sun, performing a close approach of Earth in October, lining up also with the superior conjunction and also the perihelion of interstellar object 3i Atlas. Let's check out Swan 25b. Now just recently discovered in the past few days is a new comet. This is Swan 25b and it is rapidly brightening to the point where we may be able to see it with the naked eye either now or in just a couple days, and especially if it does that close approach in October, in October. So as of right now, you should be able to spot it in the constellation of Virgo after the sun sets near Mars with binoculars or of course a better telescope. But you can also look at it using some of our probes in space and the imagery that they collect. So here we're looking at our stereo head imagery. This is kind of a wide angle shot, the H I one shot there. It's specifically useful for tracking hydrogen. And so there's some indications that this is a hydrogen rich uh, comet as a result. But see that right there? That is Swan 25b. You see the tail stretching out in the anti sunward direction. This is where the sun is. We see these coronal mass ejections and solar wind launching off from the sun, though the sun itself is not in view of this camera and we see it there zooming away from the sun. So it's already performed a perihelion, meaning it's gotten close to the sun. That's why it's so bright. We're not sure if it's, if it's going to break apart or not because when a comet flies in close to the sun, not only does the gravity have the potential to kind of cause it to just disintegrate uh, under intense stress, but also comets are structurally weak to begin with and they're also off-gassing. So you put all that together and comets often will perform their perihelion, swing around, closest approach to the sun, and then they'll disintegrate in the days following. So we're not sure if Swan 25b is going to survive till October. We're still not exactly sure as to its orbital characteristics. So that is not available online in terms of like an easy orbital viewer, but some of the early calculations suggest that it'll get within about 0.25 astronomical units of the Earth in October. And as I talk about often on the channel, when we see these comets or other things get close to the sun, it seems that that often provokes solar activity. So we just got out of a G3 minus geomagnetic storm from a coronal hole high speed stream impact, but we've been having some pretty big solar flares on the far side of the sun. This also corresponded exactly with a superior conjunction of Mercury. There was a coronal mass ejection that launched off on the far side towards Mercury back around the 9th of September, then performed its superior conjunction on 13th. On the 14th, there's another coronal mass ejection that launched off in the direction of Mercury on the far side. Well, it also may have lined up with this comet as well. So I think that's all very interesting. But Swan 25b may be visible to the naked eye in just the next few days, and maybe even tonight. It's a lot of kind of uncertainty around it, but it is rapidly brightening so I recommend if you have a clear western horizon to make sure you go out, especially with a pair of binoculars or maybe more advanced equipment like a sea star or other telescopes and give it a look because it is showing up in the constellation of Virgo right next to Mars and the star Spica. So you should be able to find it. And as you'll notice with this imagery there, it has a very long tail. So that is quite remarkable. It shows clear cometary behavior unlike 3i Atlas, which is very, very bizarre. And I'll have another update video for you on 3i Atlas soon. But if you wanna get your 3i Atlas fixed before that, I do have 3i Atlas merch now available. You see this long sleeve navy, 100% cotton shirt I have here, artwork on the back is from my father. He painted that about two decades or so ago. And well, I thought it was perfect for some sort of 3i Atlas shirt. I made this for myself and I liked it so much as like, let's offer this to everyone on the channel. So if you'd like to pick up your 3i Atlas merch, then you can go to earthevolution.com slash store. There's a link in the video description specifically for this product page. And you can check that out. Available to everyone in the United States, size small to double XL. And they seem to run just a little small. I'm wearing a large right here, fits really nice. So keep that in mind. But yeah, a lot happening 
in our interplanetary neighborhood right now. We just got out of that G3 minus G magnetic storm. We have uh, asteroid 2025 FA22 performing that close flyby on the 18th. A couple other asteroids also right around that time frame, though not as big or as close, doing flybys. We have this new comet appearing and interstellar object 3I Alice is getting closer and closer and closer to the sun and its perihelion day by day. So I will keep you up to date on everything that's happening energetically, whether that's here on Earth with earthquakes, volcanoes, and more with the sun, solar activity, space weather, in our solar system with planetary resonances, planetary geometry, things like this, and also beyond in interstellar space and with the cosmos. So please subscribe. I've been your host, Stefan Burns. Smash that like button to help this channel grow. Thank you all so much for watching. Wishing each and every single one of you well. Please take care of yourselves. I'll see you all in the next video.